that in the complete Indus Valley civilization they have not found any temple. That's why till now archaeologists they have or historians they have this confusion about the religion of the people which were living there. Hello friends, Harappan civilization or Indus Valley civilization is one of the oldest human settlement in our history. Today in this video, I am going to talk about, I am going to focus on all the architectural features, all the interesting and peculiar architectural features of this civilization. And I bet that after watching this video, you will be forced to think that how smart our ancestors were and how far ahead they were in terms of architecture from the remaining world. But before moving forward, for all those who are new to this channel, I am architect Shivam Kaushik and through this channel, we are trying to create architectural awareness, which will be helpful, especially for those students who are preparing for architecture entrance exams. So now moving to my topic, Harappan civilization basically started back in 3000 BC, that is 5000 years back. However, according to a recent study which was done by, by Archaeological Survey of India, ASI and IIT Kharagpur, they have claimed, they have claimed that this civilization was not 5000 years old, it was more than 8000 years old. This study was done I think in 2016. Moving on to the location of this civilization, basically this civilization started from today's Northwest India and Pakistan. Now moving little bit zoom, now going into little bit detail, this civilization settled all around Indus river, that is in Hindi we call it Sindhu river. Because of obvious reasons, obviously because the river provided them uh, fresh water, regular supply of fresh water as well as fertile land for agriculture, some food as well as a mode of transport also. Moving on to our first architectural feature, at my back you can see a 3D image of Harappan city. If you will see or you will visualize this image with a little bit detail, you will find out that the complete city has used an urban design concept of grid planning. Basically grid planning is a concept in which the complete city is divided into grids using main roads as well as secondary roads which ease out the traffic movement as well as the placement of built masses. Also, if you will, again I would like to quote it, that this concept of urban designing, the grid planning concept is still widely used all across the world today also. Also, you will notice in the image at my back that the complete city was having a fortified wall which was not to protect the city from invaders. It was basically used to protect the city from flood. Also, the city was having gateways. One more very interesting feature in this image, which you can easily figure out, is that the complete city is divided into two parts. First is this part, second is this part. You can see that this part of the city is little bit raised is on a higher level. Basically, this part used to consist all the public buildings, all the social buildings, as well as the remaining part of the city used to consist of all the residential buildings. I mean, can you imagine that at that time, five or eight thousand years back, our ancestors were having this knowledge, this cleverness to classify the buildings on their uses and to create a level difference to create importance of a building and to denote other residential buildings. Now moving on to the, also I would like to show you another images which shows in the front view that how this part is raised and how this part is on a lower level. You can also see in this image that oh, this is an image of uh, Harappan city okay, which is took in recent years. You can see that this is one of the street and all the secondary streets are meeting this main street at 90 degree angle, which is a symbol of grid planning. Now moving on to little bit detail, you know that all the residences, all the residences 
of Harappan city was having in-house well as well as you know in-house well as well as plush toilets. I mean can you imagine they used to use in-house toilet. The uh, toilets were present inside their house and there was a regular supply of fresh water as well as there is a proper well maintained drainage system which used to take the waste from the houses to the manhole in the street and then it used to take the waste outside the city. In today's dates also many movies people are making you know to stop people from going out for washroom in the jungle or in the in the agriculture field. You know, till now people not people are not aware of this much. And five thousand years back, our ancestors had this understanding that we can easily do, we can easily make toilet inside the house, and we can have a proper drainage system. You can see in the image at my back how these drains are running all across the secondary streets. Also, in this image, you can see how these drains are covered by stones at the top. You know, these people were also aware about hygiene. They were also worried about cleanliness. Why I said it? Because at the corner of the street, you can also find dustbins made out of bricks. Even today also in the capital, in the metropolitan city, you will not find dustbins all across the, all around the city. Also, moving to my next, another feature of this city, you know, the Harappan civilization, many houses were not only single story, they were double story houses. So, our ancestor had already figured out this concept of making one floor over, 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 the, over the ground floor. I mean, can you imagine 8000 years back, 5 to 8000 years back. Also, some of the major public building which they find out were granaries, granaries to store crops. And these granaries were having access from both the sides. From both the sides, you have access as well as a proper ventilation. The storage of crops is till now a major concern of Indian government. And our ancestors at 5 to 8,000 years back, they were having this knowledge to how to store it properly. And they were worried about it. You know, and they were trying to figure out a proper solution. I, and I hope that this solution must be working for them. Also, one more thing which I would like to quote here, which is a very interesting thing and I know that it will hit you till the bottom of your heart. In the complete city, in the complete civilization, archaeologists has, have not found any weaponry, any place to make warfare material. You know, it means that our ancestors were focused on development more than developing their military. They were peaceful people. Also, one more interesting thing that I would like to quote here, that in the complete Indus Valley civilization, they have not found any temple. That's why, till now, archaeologists, they have or historians, they have this confusion about the religion of the people which were living there. But, but for your knowledge, I have quoted an information, I am quoting in this video, an information which is outside the topic of architecture, that they have figured out, they have found some seals, which is of this decoration, this design, which were the closest depiction to Lord Shiva or Lord Pashupati. Also, they have fi find out some coins having these satya drawn on them. You can say, historians, they say that basically at this, in this Indus Valley civilization, it was basically the beginning period of Hinduism. Because these depictions are the closest, are closest to Hinduism. Also, in Mohan Jodaru, they have find out, they found a central 
pool, a central pool which they named as a great bath. Now, can you imagine, can you think about it, why was the need of this central public bath? Because already the city were near to rivers. Archaeologists and historians say that it was used for spiritual and religious reasons. People used to come here to take bath as shown in this, these images. These images were depicted, were shown in a movie which is which was made on Mohanjodaro. Okay. So these were some major architectural features of Harappan civilization or popularly known as Indus Valley civilization. But the agenda of this video was not only to tell you how, how smart our ancestors were and how far ahead they were in terms of architecture. It was also to make you think why we couldn't keep the legacy of this amazing architectural knowledge. Why till now we take the British architecture and the Western architecture as a benchmark? Why we are not proud on our own history which at that time was far ahead from the world? See, one more thing as an architect I would like to quote here. Urban design has a much wider impact than what people think. See, when you start constructing your home, you decide a best placement, best placement for your kitchen, best placement for your rooms, best placement for toilet, for drawing room, for puja room, for dining area, etc, etc. Because you know that once it is built, you cannot undo it. The same goes with urban design, same goes with city planning. Once it is built, it is built. You cannot change it even for a thousand years. So, nowadays, in current days, when I go to cities, even in Delhi and CR area, and I find that there is no proper place for parking, you know, and there is no, there is no organized market. There are slums all around, you know, no proper drainage system, no you know, traffic jam, no parking place, no proper parking place, you know. And I know as an architect that these things, you know, are in, at many places, they are like impossible to change now. You cannot change them now. You know, this makes me think that if we were so intelligent, so clever, five to eight thousand years back, then why we are like this now? Was it due to was it due to, you know, that we got ruled for hundreds of years, that it took our confidence, it took away our confidence and our own, our confidence on our own knowledge, on own history, or it took away our knowledge, or it was due to the post-independence government, that they couldn't, they were not focused on city planning, or it was due to post-independence poverty, or it was just due to that we people don't take city planning as seriously. Or was it due to the population which was very difficult to manage? I don't know the answer. For me, there might be many answers. But I would like you people to answer me in the comments. To give me your reason which you think led India to this situation where most of the city, most of Indian cities are unorganized and unplanned with only 10 to 15 planned cities in India. Thank you.